What is going on, SMT Nation? It's your boy, the SMT, and boy, do I have a really, really good video for you today. Uh, this one took a little bit of digging, and this one took a little bit of effort, but I was able to get a hold of some resources that are going to be critical in understanding the concept of today's video. Let's take the opportunity in this video to look at data management. We're talking about wireless network management. When it comes to accessing wireless networks, whether it's Verizon or AT&T or T-Mobile, they all have a certain operational methodology that they use. Some mobile network operators do things a little bit more uh, intelligently and they have uh, better resources allocated to actively managing a tiered network operation. Like in the example of AT&T where their QCI tier levels are very, um, they're, they're very well tiered and they're very well developed and distinguishable. And then in other cases, like in the case of T-Mobile, it's actually not as well developed and not as modern, and they just do it kind of like based on task. The reason that wireless operators do this and actually manage the network is that so depending on what type of service that you pay for gives you a certain type of expectation for quality of service. Now, this is important for people that pay a premium for their service. They should have a better network experience than others who pay less for it. To give me an example, if somebody is on prepaid, when it comes to wireless, uh, their network experience should not be the same when it comes to premium experience, say somebody who pays for a postpaid or a business line or even a first responders line. They should all be distinguishable based on the quality of service and the QCI. When it comes to like commercial grade and consumer grade wireless expectations, how your data is going to be managed, we're going to take a look at that in this video. So stick around. All of that information starts now. So here it is everyone, this is a video that a lot of people have been asking for. This is how T-Mobile manages their network. The first uh, task that is going to receive the highest priority on the T-Mobile network is conversational voice. The most important thing when it comes to a wireless network is going to be calling. It's always been that way and it's probably always going to stay that way. And I think that's probably a good thing, whether it's consumer grade or business or first responders. It's got to be instantaneous. It's got to be dependable. It's got to be reliable. There's no compromises there. And this has been the case pretty much since the beginning of cellular times. It's really the lifeline of wireless network. You've got to be able to get your calls through regardless of what's going on. Number two on the priority list. So we're kind of going in succession. Number two is conversational video, AKA live streaming. Some of you out there may be doing this. You may be familiar with Zoom calls and Zoom meetings and virtual meetings, YouTube live streams, Periscope's another example of this, Instagram, Facebook, it could be social media, it could be apps that actually are run for business and educational purposes. Any type of live video feeding, that's where this goes. So whether it's friends, family, or if it's business and education, that's where all that live streaming and virtual meeting stuff, when it comes to that data traffic, that's where it kind of gets placed in priority. Moving on to number three is IMS signaling. This is also known as IP multimedia subsystem, actually a framework of multimedia services. And this does include voice over LTE, voice over IP. I know it does include kind of like the suite of Wi-Fi calling, HD calling, RCS chat. It's obviously really critical with LTE technology and probably moving forward with NR with 5G. So voice over NR and all the future technologies will rely heavily upon impacting this particular item within the QCI. All right, so those are the first kind of like top tier items on the priority of network and data management. Do keep in mind, this is all the framework for what T-Mobile does. So this next item, this is number four. This is Magenta Data. This is all of T-Mobile's good old connectivity. So we're talking 2G, 3G, HSPA, LTE, and 5G data. This then gets another like individualized priority item list of first responders, then business grade customers, then consumer based. Then we have postpaid, prepaid, prepaid consumer prepaid, and MVNO. And then specifically within those, you have Magenta Plus, then Magenta, then the Essentials. And then from the consumer prepaid, you get the breakdown of Metro and then other companies like Mint and Family Mobile and Leica Mobile and stuff like that. Let's go over to number five. This is tethering data. Interesting here, regardless of the plan type, regardless if you're a customer on business or if you're a customer on consumer, prepaid, whatever else, you are going to get 
uh, manage the tethering at the same level. So regardless of plan type. So whether you're uh, first responders, business, consumer grade, it doesn't make a difference. Number six, we have heavy users. This is an interesting item. Uh, some plans have a deprioritization threshold to ensure uh, you know, specific users, as soon as they reach this point, they get managed according to that threshold. They can be slow to ensure that non-heavy users have a priority within the network during those times. T-Mobile does claim that it's a very small percentage of users that fit into this uh, qualification uh, as heavy users. And some plans they cap kind of like that threshold at 50 gigs. And in others, I know it's 35 gigs and it's really plan dependent and it's also access dependent, you know, whether it's prepaid or it's postpaid or whatever level of prepaid or postpaid you have. Next, we have number seven. This is called OAM or best effort. This is where the T-Mobile network is actively actually trying to get user equipment, whether it's smartphones, flip phones. Uh, this could also be tablets, laptops, hotspots, whatever it is connected to towers to catch or assign them for those operational purposes. What they're trying to do is to get and establish an instantaneous connection. Uh, they want it to obviously be really, really fast. They want it to be reliable and dependable. And that's really the main goal of this purpose, just to catch on and latch on to the network. So I know you guys are probably thinking it was gonna be some crazy scientific explanation, but in reality, T-Mobile's management of their data is task-based and it's actually pretty simple and straightforward. There's nothing really sophisticated or super complicated about it. This is how they manage calling. This is how they manage messaging. It's how they manage their data traffic, whether it's, you know, consumer grade or it's business grade or it's first responders. That's kind of how things are done on the T-Mobile network. So this is how things are currently done. And this is obviously subject to change. This, you know, 5G networking, this 5G core, and they actually, they just put out, you know, this news about being on standalone 5G. That's going to change everything because once that 5G network core is in place, there can be a more active uh, management of data access on the network. Uh, it gets more intelligent. It gets more defined. And it actually helps improve service, service for all users on the network as they fit into these different network slices and they fit into these different priorities on the network. Up to this point, T-Mobile's network management has been very, uh, let's call it primitive. Let's call it... Uh, not so modern. Uh, AT&T really leads the way when it comes to this. Verizon also does a little bit of this as well. Uh, but moving forward with the new 5G network core, one that is obviously much more evolved and has you know come a long way to be more modernized, things are going to be different. And I actually can't wait for this to happen because being stuck in the Stone Age when it comes to network technology is not a place that a wireless provider of that magnitude wants to be. In my opinion, how a network is managed is actually probably just as important as the data itself. The fact that the data is available and calls can be placed and all of that is great, but it also has to be managed appropriately. And if you're going to offer premium products and premium services, those customers should be receiving high level priority. And those that are paying less, it makes sense, offer somewhat of a lesser experience or in the case of some users, maybe it's all they really require. And of course, pricing can be matched with this priority access. So I, for one, can't wait for 5G network cores to really get put in place and for it to become super intelligent and more modernized. Because in my opinion, uh, these old ways have to go by the wayside. We, mean, we need much more intelligent options. It's actually good for the future of access. A lot of that throttling and deprioritization, a lot of that can go by the wayside if network slicing is put in place and users can be actively placed into priority tiers that fit the needs of the services that they require. What's kind of strange here, and a lot of people usually don't know this, is the fact that there's no real bottom or top of the totem pole. It's really just based on task, what applications you're using, and what needs to be done utilizing the network. The quality of service class indicator is really important. When we talk about QCI, it's something that I think is going to have to evolve and really, really quickly. So that way networks are more pleasurable and usable for most people. Let me know what you guys think of all of this priority access management tools uh, or lack thereof. Let me know what you think about how T-Mobile is doing it. Do you think that they should be adjusting this and changing the way they operate this sooner rather than later? In my opinion, there's a lot of work to do, but I know with a new 5G network core that is standalone based and very granular, those things can change and for the better very quickly. And here in 2020, all indications are by 2021, we should be seeing these things happening very, very soon.
So sound off in the comment section and let me know what you guys think of all the information in this video. Thank you guys for taking this opportunity to watch this video. Uh, if you are new, maybe it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button, become a member of the SMT Nation, activate that bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. Also, don't forget to hit that like button, share this to your favorite social media platforms so you know this can get out there and obviously you'll be helping the channel out tremendously. Thank you in advance for that. Do check out some of the links in the description box for all the community items. We got the Patreon page link. We also have the at Sneed Tech Twitter handle. We do Periscope Lives on there. If you want to get more involved with the communities, that's a good way to do that. And then we have the audio-only version of the podcast. I've got links down in the description box for that. We're on Apple. We're on Google. We're on Spotify. Pretty much every major app that, or platform that does audio-only podcasts, we're there. If you're not satisfied and you want more from the SMT YouTube channel, here are some other videos I've positioned around here for you to check out if you're not ready to leave. Thank you in advance for watching. That's pretty much it for this one. Thank you all for watching. Again, I am the SMT, and we will catch you guys on the next video. Peace.